and is dragging a net from its stern. It's thought to be a Chinese fishing boat searching for coral. On another vessel, people can be seen working on the deck. The crew is apparently lowering a net into the water. Several Japanese Coast Guard ships have been patrolling the area. The crews are trying to identify boats operating illegally, but it's not easy. Last month, crews from two Chinese ships were apprehended for illegal fishing, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. The Coast Guard has confirmed that as of Monday, 205 Chinese boats were operating near the Ogasawara Islands. Under international law, officials cannot make arrests, even in Japanese territorial waters, unless they actually witness poachers in the act of putting nets into the water. The Chinese ships are believed to be targeting coral varieties known as precious corals. The coral is considered a symbol of good luck. The most popular variety, red coral, fetches around $21,000 per kilogram. One expert says Chinese crews are poaching coral around Japan because they've been chased out of their own waters. China has designated red corals as the most heavily protected species on par with the giant panda. Fishermen can't harvest that coral in Chinese waters, so they come to Japan. On Thursday, a representative from the Fisheries Cooperative reported to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. He said the environmental damage that's being caused is irreparable. Poachers tear out the coral completely, leaving nothing behind in the beds. I don't know when we'll be able to harvest coral like we used to. A poacher can rip out a coral bed in hours that took decades to grow. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said a diplomatic letter had been sent to China's foreign minister. He said the letter expressed regret over the alleged coral poaching and asked that China stop it immediately. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hong Lei's response did little to ease concerns. We hope that cooperation between regulatory authorities in China and Japan will properly resolve the issue. Earlier this week, the flotilla of Chinese ships operating off Ogasawara moved outside of Japanese waters to avoid an approaching typhoon. But Coast Guard officials say by Friday, more than 100 of the vessels had returned. They say they will keep monitoring the situation around the clock. Health Ministry officials in Tokyo say they're testing a man for the Ebola virus. They say the man went to a hospital on Friday afternoon after developing a fever. The officials say he's in his 60s and had recently visited Liberia in West Africa. The man has been transferred to a designated medical institution to undergo further checks. The officials say the patient told them he had no contact with Ebola patients in Liberia. Last month, a Canadian journalist was taken to hospital in Tokyo after arriving from West Africa with a fever. He was tested for the virus, but the results were negative. World leaders are gathering in Beijing for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. Ministerial talks begin on Friday, and there's a lot on the agenda. Leaders from 21 countries and territories will attend the two-day meeting. They will look into the possibility of creating a Pacific-wide free trade zone. They're expected to discuss whether to set a time frame for establishing the free trade area of the Asia-Pacific. Officials from Tokyo and Beijing are trying to set up a summit on the sidelines of the APIC forum. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe wants to hold his first meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Japan's Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida will attend the APIC ministerial talks. He will also try to arrange a meeting with China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Officials from the two countries are discussing the agenda of a possible summit. 
Japanese government sources say the Chinese side is starting to show positive signs toward holding a dialogue. Super Typhoon Haiyan slammed into the Philippines on November 8, 2013. Roaring wind and powerful storm surges washed away people and buildings. The typhoon left over 7,300 dead or missing, making it one of the worst natural disasters in recorded Philippine history. The city of Tacloban on Leyte Island was one of the hardest hit. NHK World's Minori Takao is in the city. You know, from first glance, it would look to most people like life is beginning to get back to normal in the city of 200,000 people. You know, as you can see behind me, the Tacloban City Hall has signs all over its building that lets the world know how much the people of Tacloban appreciate the international efforts that have been made here for recovery. The roof of the City Hall has been temporarily repaired from the storm damage. But many survivors say full recovery is still a long way off. Last time I was here, it was here shortly after the disaster. Compared to then, Tacloban is vibrant with energy. Vehicles are back on the roads. People are shopping, going about their business. Many buildings in the center of the city have been rebuilt. But scars of the disaster are not altogether gone. People are still grieving for their loved ones. The roof of this cathedral was destroyed in the storm, but has been partially restored. The repairs have been paid for with donations. It's good that our church is uh, have this new roof na. Parang it symbolizes our life also now. One way din siguro na nakita. It gave me strength to live and go forward. These big ships were washed ashore by the waves when the typhoon hit. A year has passed and they're finally dismantling this ship over here. Workers are using power tools to take the ships apart. In the shadow of the ships, many local people are afraid to live near the sea that once destroyed their lives. I want to move. I don't want to experience such a nightmare again. We still live in the same place since the storm. We have no other place to go. Many survivors of this 